Live. This is Dave Finale, and this is Real Estate Talk TGIF, episode 90. We have done 89 weeks in a row uh, with 90 total shows, and today is no different. It is episode 90, Real Estate Talk TGIF. We all know what TGIF stands for, right, don't we? It means thank God it's finale. That's correct. And after 90 episodes, I thank God it's finale, especially today with everything going on. I want to welcome our guest today, who is a, uh, a New Jersey guy, um, serial entrepreneur, marketing genius, and broker owner, in broker, former broker owner, but broker real estate person, and just great old guy, Mark Stein. Mark, welcome to the show. Welcome to the thank broker. you, Dave. How are you this morning? I am fantastic. I am I am feeling energized with a lot of things going on and stuff, and and we'll get into the daily routines. But first, I, I want to. I mean, every time I start the same way, and I'm going to keep going that way with it. And I want to ask you your story. I mean, you know, being local in New Jersey and not, I mean, not really that national yet. You're getting there. Um, a lot of people may not know who you are, what you are, where you started, and what you're all about. So, if you could give us your story and, and what you do, that'd be great. Sure. Uh, I started in real estate back in 2001. I uh, didn't didn't know why I started in real estate at the beginning. I really did it because I was more of that serial entrepreneur that you mentioned. I was working on a bunch of different projects in a bunch of different fields. And my mother, as mothers always do, they're like, just have something to fall back on just in case all your other crazy ideas don't work out. You know, why don't you go get your real estate license and, and work in real estate a little bit? And I was like, you want to know what? I'll do that. I'll get my real estate license. I was in college, I was working on a bunch of projects. Um, I was trying to figure out my path of what I wanted to do. And I got the license and for the first three years, I kind of bounced around like a lot of agents do, like did a deal here and there, tried to figure out the system. How, did, how do you make money in real estate? And over the course of the first three years in real estate, it kind of just clicked where I fell in love with the business and in love with helping people buy houses that become homes. And it kind of just took off from there. And within three years of working part time, I decided to do it full time. Um, and I kind of just grew it from there. I started working for a family owned business here in Teaneck, New Jersey, um, the Russo real estate family. Um, they are incredible people. They taught me the right way to do business and they've been mentors till this day. I still call them ask some questions and they kind of just started me on the right path in terms of you know, doing good for others and making sure you, you treat customers right, no matter who they are. Everyone works hard for their money. Everyone works hard to buy a house and respect everyone and make sure they get what they need. So it's kind of how I started in the business. Over time, then I decided to go off a little bit more on my own. I became a manager of a friend's real estate office for a while where I grew that business tremendously, brought on a couple agents and started getting involved in training and coaching and found a real enjoyment and passion out of helping others build their own businesses, understand what they need to do in order to grow and succeed and help other agents really just build wonderful businesses. And at some point, you know, as always happens, you get a little content in where you are and you need to change things up. So back in uh, 2007, 2008, I went and interviewed at 11 different real estate offices in Bergen County. Wow. You want to know what? I couldn't tell you the difference about any office except for the color that was painted on the wall behind them. That was wow. it. They all were selling me the same stuff. Uh, we have we have technology at that point. Really, no one really had great technology. Um, we have marketing plans. Well, they all had these big marketing books that were built, you know, for agents in the '80s and '90s. Like they didn't yep. update them. Uh -huh. So I kind of felt a little discouraged, and I decided, hey, I'm going to rebrand and remarket and do things a little bit differently. And we opened up in uh, March of 2008. We opened Blinks Residential. And within three years, we became one of the top independent brokers or top brokerages in Bergen County in the NJMLS. Um, in the last few years, we finished either number 13, 14 in residential sales in the entire county with, a, uh, with an independent broker, um, which was just incredible to see. And then over the years, I've gotten involved with helping more agents, the agents on my team. I train them, I coach them, make sure they have what they need. And I've been doing it now over the country for the last uh, seven, eight years where I'm just going around the country, coaching agents, training agents, doing some public speaking just to help agents realize that, you know, if they have the right mindset and they're ready to actually do business, that they can do a tremendous amount of business. They just have to be ready to do that. So that's really my story in like a little short version, but a lot of ups and downs over the years. But here we are today, successful as, as can be and, and just moving forward. 
It's successful because I mean you've had ups and downs throughout your throughout your journey and throughout your career and 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 I mean I think the thing I think the thing that keeps us going is the motivation that okay it's a little bit of a setback when you've had when you've had setbacks how have, how have you gotten out of that how have you dealt with it I mean you and I honestly tell everybody we've known each other for a number of years yeah. so we've gotten to know each other pretty well and, and become friends and stuff so talk about how you get out of that mistake or get out of that setback. So setbacks happen in everyone's business, right? So we all have to, at some point, just be honest with ourselves that we're in a funk, we're in a setback, where something that happened changed our emotions, our mindset. You know, it sometimes even changed the way we love ourselves, right? And that's really what I realized over the last 10 years is that it really comes down to self-love. Like if you love yourself, right? And when you love something, you're obsessed with it. And you've heard me talk about this before. Yep. Right? When you're obsessed with something, you just want to, engross your entire day with it right morning noon night like you have an idea you have a plan you, you you're happy about what you're doing you're obsessed with it and so when you get into that you know funk or you get into that issue where you're like you're just completely down on yourself you have to take a minute take a step back right maybe take a couple of days off find yourself find that self-love again of what you love what you're obsessed with right and realize what you're here to do and then refocus on that and use that to rebuild back up but the years that i was down on myself or that i was you know let's call it mildly depressed because this business has ups and downs right are the years i didn't do well the years that i was truly loving myself and loving what i was doing and i was obsessed with the myself and the success is when my years were the best and even in 2008 in 2009 and 2010 when this entire market around the country was really you know a difficult time for a lot of people those were my best years in real estate where i did 40 50 60 deals a year um because I loved what I did. I was helping people either out of a difficult situation or I was helping people get into houses at a great price, right? So wh whether it was a buyer or a seller, I was helping them in some way where to this day, those people are grateful, right? And to this day, I'm still friendly with these people where they call me up and tell me what's going on in their lives, where they see me at uh, MetLife Stadium at an event and they're like, stop me to come talk to me and tell me all the good stuff that happened now that they have a house, right? Or even someone who had to sell their house because they had lost their job and I helped sell their house for them for as much as I could. And they still had to take a loss on it, but I helped them get another house a couple of years later. And now they're happy as can be that they actually took my advice and did all that. Cause if they just sat in their house and waiting for it to be foreclosed on, they don't know where they would be today. But because I was able to educate them and help them through that process, they were like, you know, forever grateful. And, and that hearing that years later, is just amazing. Well, you know, it's, it's, we're in a we're in a really strange time, and this is like I've heard this phrase so much. The phrase "uncharted waters" right. um, over the past week, and, and so many things have happened. It's March thirteenth. There's there's this thing called COVID nineteen, the coronavirus, and yeah. you talk about you know, I mean, your your biggest motto throughout your career and your life has been "do good for others," which I got scrolling on the screen now. Right. And um, we need to actually re-educate ourselves. I think in this day and age, how, how do you? Let's talk first about the real estate agent uh, as how they can approach this um, this this crisis that we're in with COVID-19. So this is a crisis, right? We, we, we have a lot of, let's call it panic going on around us, right? You go to the supermarket and there's no toilet paper to be had. I don't know what that's about, but <laughs> there, there's just no toilet paper in the supermarkets the last couple of days. And so it's just amazing to me the, the hysteria that's going on. But just like this virus is contagious, right? And, and the panic is contagious. Like you, your neighbor's panicking. Like I gotta go buy all the stuff. So you go buy all the stuff. And it's like, you know, that snowstorm comes and everyone has to go buy milk and eggs, milk and eggs and bread and all that stuff. At the end of the day, life is contagious, right? So whether you're calm with your clients, it's contagious. Right. If you're happy, if you're enthusiastic about what you do, if you're kind, if you're joyful, right? You can right. choose who you are and how you display yourself to others. And right. that's contagious, right? And an agent that's successful and has that glow of success that they have when they go talk to their clients, their clients are going to feel successful in what they're doing. So right. we talk about this contagiousness of this, you know, life that we live in right now. But if you just shift the way you think and go back to the core of who you are and just be kind to people and show people the right way to do things, it'll calm them down. Right. And that's what my agents and I talk about all the time is making sure that like, Listen, what, what's going on in this world, whether it's this virus or whether it's something else in the economy, be calm, 
talk to your clients, educate them, show them that you're going to be successful with them, for them, and all this happens together and helps everyone grow to, to reach the goals that they want to reach. So it's, it's not just about this virus that we're in today, but take a minute, let's think about what we can do for others and make sure that your neighbors, your, your, your sellers, your buyers are all calm, explain to them that this is going to pass, right? And that we're going to figure out how to right. make sure your real estate goals are, are successful. Right. And I, I think, I think, you know, it's, it's, it, while it may be different in uncharted waters, it's, it's, it's really the same thing. We always, we always preach and talk to the people we're trying to help improve their businesses with. And that's, you know, do what do good for others and, and, and do right and try to help them with different things. Like, you know what, I'll give you an example. Like for me, I mean, you know, we all have our own opinions about what's going on in life. And, and, and I've decided that no matter what my opinion is, it really doesn't matter. I need to deal with what's going on now right. and how to work forward with it. You know, so I did a quick video this morning about, you know what, it's time for us to re-engage with each other. Right. And that can help one in a real estate business as well. Don't you agree? Absolutely. You know, so, um, you know, you talk about, we, we've talked about uh, something a lot uh, together and, um, it's, you know, we're all, we're always thinking about new ideas. We're always thinking about the process, right. Um, for the real estate agent and everybody else and just for real estate, but a lot of agents get stuck and they're in their own way. How, how do you help them get out of their own way? So my big thing that I've learned from my coaches over the years was you can't always be excited about everything you do. You can't always be completely motivated every day. Um, but you need to set yourself a schedule every day, right? You need to take the steps forward every day to get to the goals that you set out, even if you're not excited about it. And hopefully the steps and the actions and the tasks that you're doing every day will bring you back to that excitement. So I time block my day every day in terms of, you know, first thing in the morning, I take, take time for myself, go to the gym, you know, take a little couple minutes to meditate just to relax right before the day gets started. Cause we all run around all day, especially real estate agents, right? Like, we're, we're being pulled in a hundred different directions. We're in our office, we're the clients, we're the buyers, we're the sellers, right. we're, with, we're with mortgage people, we're doing home inspections. All these different things are, are going on and we're being pulled in a hundred different directions. But if you learn to time block your day and know that at, you know early in the morning is going to be about you, and then throughout the day, you, you say, I'm going to do an hour of emails in the morning, I'm going to do an hour in emails midday, and I'm going to do an hour in emails in the evening, right? And then set your appointments throughout that um, when you're going to meet with clients, when you're going to prospect, when you're going to do different things. We all have different goals, so your time blocking will look different from agent to agent. But if you do those things in order to make sure you're successful, it will continually become a habit. And once it becomes a habit, you'll get excited about it because you know what the results are, right? It'll bring joy and happiness to you because you know what the end game is. So by doing those tasks every day, will remind you why you're doing it all. So, so you you use you use kind of a word. Use the word. I think you use ritual. Um, yeah. In, in, in what your day is about. And I've talked to a lot of different people and and I, I've also, I have a ritual every morning. I get up a certain time. Honestly, I get up between 4.30 and 5 every day. Better than me. I, do, <laughs> I do some reading. I, I actually, honestly, in the in the bad weather, I stare out the window for about five minutes. It right. seems really strange, but it's kind of like my way of meditating. Right. And in, in nicer weather, I'm outside. But you talked about getting started a certain way of the day. How important is that ritual that start of your day that you get into your block? And that's also a block as well. Would you agree right. with that? Absolutely. Look, the way you start your day is the way you're going to, your, your entire energy is going to be for that day, right? So yeah. if you create yourself in the positive energy, right, where you take the couple minutes to take care of yourself and love yourself, right, you feel better about yourself than throughout the day. It gives you more energy. It makes you smile, right? If you go into a room and you smile at someone versus if you go into a room and you don't, the, their first impression of you is that smile and handshake and how you talk to someone, right? But if you are that calm energy that, you know, you know who you are, love who you are, and then you go out to the world and you share that with people, people see that, they feel that. It's that energy around you that they're going to feel. And that just starts off your whole day in the right direction. And it's sometimes hard. Sometimes, you know, you get up and the phone's buzzing already and, you know, you have a thousand yeah. emails because, you know, people are emailing you throughout the night. Like, put the phone down, take the time to do for yourself. Like, I don't take my phone to the gym, right? I leave it in the car. Good. So you just go there and you focus on what you're doing at that moment for that hour. Then you do the next thing. And you continually build up your day of in the processes that you need in order to be successful. 
right? Every day we're going to get pulled out. You're going to get a call. I need to deal with this. I need to deal with that. If it doesn't, if you can't deal with it in a matter of five or 10 seconds, put it aside because you'll have time throughout your day that you blocked out to deal with responding to other things, right? So, right. you know, keep focus at the task that you're doing so that you don't lose focus at the greater goal of your day. So one of the things that, that helps me get going, I just wanted to share this with my own ritual, is that I have, the way I have it set up with my reading and my staring and, and different things I do, and then my writing, I, I have a gratitude journal and I have an affirmation goal journal. Mm -hmm. they're, they're the same book, right? Mm -hmm. But as I write my gratitudes, what I'm grateful for, and everybody, I want you to understand that what writing it down is very important because what you appreciate appreciates, and writing is the doing part of thinking, so it really right. helps you a lot. And then I go to the, I do that on the left side. I go to the right side and I write down what I want to accomplish, what I've accomplished already. It has to do with family, it has to do with love, it has to do with business, et cetera. And what I find is that as I start writing on the left side and I get to the right side for the affirmations, my energy builds, mm -hmm. my motivation builds. And, and if you don't believe me, guys, if someone who, who looks, watches this and doesn't understand it, it works for Mark and it works for me. Right. You know, I mean, I mean, you know, we're here with the energy that most wish they had, right? And, and and that's because of what we do and how we grow our business. Right. So as you talk about time blocking and we move forward talking about that system, I mean, we all have our own our own thoughts about, about time. I believe time management is impossible. However, time adjustment and time association and time differentiation can be done through time blocking. Right. You actually have non-negotiable times, right. which you were talking about. It's, it's really just, it's really just putting a plan in place for yourself like we all work right. differently but take a step back for a second write down your goals right right after you write down your goals write down the actions to get to those goals right and some of them are going to be small actions and small steps and some of them are going to be very big but if you take the time to write down your goals and then write down the actions to get to your goals you'll be able to plan your day around accomplishing those actions to get to the goal and it kind of all just goes, works in that big circle. And as long as you know that going into it, right, you can plan it out. People talk about their business plan for real estate. There's no such thing as a business plan in real estate. It's an action plan based on based on where you want to get to, what you want to do, right? Exactly. Agents want to sell, you know, 100 houses a year. Well, what are the actions you need to take in order to get there, right? Exactly. And then in terms of that, what do you need to do each day of every day in order to accomplish those actions in order to get back to the goals? Right. And it may be 100 goals a year, but let's break that down. I want to help 12 buyers a month well, right. in order to help 12 buyers a month. I need to make, you know, 100, 100 calls a day. I got to block out three hours of my day to make 100 calls to get five appointments to do, you know, and, and it just you have to keep breaking it down into these actions and then time blocking those actions in order to go back to reach that, you know, finish that action to reach the goal. So it kind of just keeps working around in that circle and around and around. But Agents talk about their business plans all the time, and I tell them, throw out your business plan. You don't need it. You need an action plan with goals on top, and that's it. You, you're absolutely correct, and, 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 and you said it today, and I've said it time and time again. I live by this, this credo is do the work. Mm -hmm. You can set up all the action plans you want. If you're not going to perform those steps. Well, that's, you, the, that's the shortcut to success. Just do it, the work. Just do the work. Ah, oh, holy shit. Talk about that a little bit more. The shortcut to success. Talk about that, Mark. The shortcut Great. to success is just doing the work. Everyone likes to find a hundred different ways around it. I'm going to do this. I'm going to look through Facebook and see what everyone else is doing. Like, who cares what everyone else is doing? That's right. Do the work that you need to do in order to succeed. Don't worry about everyone else out there and what they're doing. Well, they're, I'm going to do research or I'm not going to do something until I hit a certain amount of houses. No. Spend the time. Invest in yourself in the time. Invest in yourself in the marketing. Right. Invest yourself money so that you can get to those goals. I hear too many times like, well, I can't invest the money because I haven't sold anything yet, right? I don't have the time because I, 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 don't, I haven't done anything. I'm like, well, no, the point is invest the time, take the classes, take an hour a day and learn something new that's gonna help you in your business. Invest money in marketing and branding yourself, right? Too many agents like all of a sudden become real estate agents like, hey, hey, I'm an agent, come use me. That's, right. that, that's not what people want. They want right. a connection, they network with people. I mean, I built my business right? Originally by walking up and down the main street in, in Teaneck, which is called Cedar Lane. I met every business owner, every manager, even a ton of waitresses um, at all these restaurants, all the shop, you know, workers, they all knew me. I'd walk up, Hey, what's going on? How you doing? How's your family? What's new in the world? Do you have a, do you have a sale right now? This was before social media, right? I right. would get 
I would get, oh, they have a deal right now. And I would go to my email list and email them out. Hey, they're having a sale at the Galleria on Cedar Lane this week. Go check it out. And that's how I built my business. And within, it took me a little time, but within doing that for a year, I started getting those people to refer me as a real estate agent because they knew who I was and they, they knew that I cared. And they started giving my name out and they gave my name out to an attorney who happened to be a trust in the state's attorney. And this guy said to me, listen, everyone here, you know, in this restaurant loves you. You know, I would love to work with you. I have a house that needs to get sold. This is what I need. I was like, no problem. I'll give you, they needed a report at the date of death. They needed a, a market analysis for, for now. There's a two year time lapse. I went back, I did all the research. I got them all the data. I sent it to him. He goes, this is incredible. Um, I want to use you on, on all our estate files. I was like, great. He started giving me a business. I realized from there, all the estate attorneys need a, need a realtor. They don't know realtors. They rely on the families to hire someone or call your, you know, whoever your local realtor is. I met all the attorneys that I could, and some of them closed the door on me because they didn't want to talk to me. They just wanted to do their job. But the ones who actually took the time to meet with me and understood, like, here's the value I can bring them. They're like, we're going to use you all the time. And even to today, um, this year, you know, I haven't, you know, I'm not hugely in production anymore. I do a handful of sales throughout the year now. I help my team more than anything else. But I got three calls for estate deals in the last 90 days of attorneys I haven't talked to in three or five years. Hey, do you still do real estate? I would love for you to deal with this estate for me. And we got them all done within 30 days because they just want the, the work done. They don't want the BS and the sugar coating. Like, what's the house worth? What can we sell for today? Let's get it on the market. Let's get it sold. Let's move on. Right. They want to close out their paperwork. So all from those building those relationships with people and branding myself as I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Right. To get it done. And that kind of just clicked in me that at that point, my third or fourth year in real estate and kind of just went from there. Whatever it takes to get to the goal you need to do. That's the, that that's pretty cool. And it's really simple. It's just doing the work. I mean, I spoke to a potential. I talked to, talked to a client yesterday about going out into the neighborhood, going out into the street and just, you know, introducing themselves all over the place. I mean, right. it's just it's just a way to get known. And, and that's the biggest thing. So what should what should um, if, if there was a, 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 a success outline for an agent to be successful, what would the top three things be for that new agent or that experienced agent that just can't get anywhere? You know, the ones that make excuses that are always getting ready to get ready. Well, that's things. number one. Cut out all the bullshit. Cut right? out all the bullshit. Love Cut it. Out all okay, the right. Bullshit, exactly. Right. You know, we all tell ourselves reasons why we do or don't do something. Right. We, we all rationalize in our head. Right. You know, if we're, if we're sitting and doing like, something that's not productive like oh why aren't we doing what we need to be doing and we give ourselves excuses i'm tired i gotta go through facebook i want to see what happened in the news today or i'm going to take my dog for a walk and they take a walk longer than expected or i gotta go here at the end of the day show up and do the work right cut out all the bullshit excuses cut out all the craziness that goes on if you want to succeed you need to focus on that and not worry about all the other stuff around you. And that's really like the key to it all. I mean, once you cut out all the bullshit, then you just have to write down what it is that you want. Because you write it down and then you tell your people around you, your family, your friends, like, these are my goals. This is what I'm going to do, right? It's sometimes hard for them to be happy for you because sometimes they're going to look at you and be jealous that you have your goals written out because they don't. Yeah. So right. it is difficult at times. But if you write right. them down and you tell people about it, like, it becomes a reality because you have to now do it because you told everyone about it, right? These are my goals. I wrote them down. I'm telling you about it. I so don't, I don't know if you ever saw that that Friends episode where where uh, all the guys put down if they saw the celebrities who they were able to sleep with, right? It's a famous Friends episode where like they're on my list, right? So yes. this is their list. They make it public and they laminated their list, right? So if it happens, it's a matter of just uh, making that all work. So. Write it down, laminate it, keep it in your pocket. These are my goals. These are what I want to do. Show people, tell people, like, let the world know, right? What is it that you want to get to? What is it you want to do? What is it you want to accomplish once you hit those goals? Everyone around you may at first look at you like, I can't believe you're doing this. But over time, they're like, he's really focused. He really knows what he wants. Maybe I should relook at myself and figure out what I want. Because most people don't take the time to do that. No, they don't. And, and, and you know, um, as you're going through all that stuff and, you know, get put the bullshit aside and write things down and stuff. You know, I, I, I get a lot of people, I've talked to a lot of people in my career, and I know you have too, where, you know, you hear the whining and you hear, well, you know, I can't do that or I don't want to do that. And, 
And, and speaking to all the different people I've had the, the, the absolute pleasure of, of talking to on these broadcasts, like Greg Harrelson last week, he talked about the reason that agents are not successful making phone calls is they're not prepared, right? right. It talks about practice and everything else. Right. Um, and because they're not, they don't have that confidence. So, you know, is, is there, is there another way to be prepared aside from doing the practice and, and just cut the whining out? Because look, the dirtiest word in our business is independent and we're right. independent contractors. Is there, is there a switch mark? Is there something that we could like smack ourselves in the head with? You either want it or you don't. And that's what it comes down to, right? If you want it, you're going to do the work. If you don't want it, and you're in this business because you hear it, you can make good money in it, but you don't want to do the work, then you're never going to make money in it. You're never going to be successful. And I met with an agent last week, and this was just, this was mind boggling. Like, do you want, my question directly was, do you want to be successful? And they weren't sure they want to be successful in real estate. I'm like, then you shouldn't be in this business, right? Why are you interviewing to be a realtor, right, on my team? And you can't even tell me that you want to be successful. Well, then why would I want you on my team? Yeah, exactly. Because they don't, most agents have this fear of, of expressing their inner beliefs and inner feelings about what they want, right? But it's because they don't know. They, they, they hear, let me get into real estate and get my real estate license because it's easy to get, right? And it's easy and people make them tons of money in it. But then they get there and they're like, oh, I have to do that. Oh, I have to do this. Oh, I have to make phone calls. I have to knock on doors. I have to go meet people. I thought I'd just kind of show houses and, and collect the commission check. Right. right. And maybe that's the way it was at one point when I got into this business, it was super easy. I would show three houses, sell one, close 30 days and get a check. But over time, this business has gotten more involved right. and you got to be willing to put the work and time and energy in, in order to do that. So the first question I ask every agent right now, whether I'm coaching them or whether they're coming onto my team is what do you want? Do you want to be successful? Right. And, and, and when, when you hear them hesitate, you realize they don't, they don't even know. And that's right. part of the big problem that we have in our industry right now is that all these agents, we have, we have, we discussed how many agents are there right now? 1.4, 1.5 million realtors. Right. Right. And then above that, there's real estate agents. Half right. of them, not even half of them, 10% of them actually succeed. The other 10% do okay. And then 80% of them just kind of like have their license. Well, that's just crazy. That's nuts. It, it really can is. Imagine, can you imagine if you owned a corporation with 1.5 million workers, but only 300,000 of them actually produced for you and you just paid <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> it's nuts. Well, that's that, that's where the word independent comes from, man. I mean, independent. I look at it this way. Like you said, 1.5 million realtors, right? So if you look at it, hmm, let's see. They got into business to make as much money, money as they could, much money as they could, and set their own hours. Right. I'm going to tell you that 1.3 million don't want to make any money because they don't want to work any hours, right? Well, they may want to make money, but they don't want to work the hours in order to make the money. You need right. one with well, the other. Well, if, if I could just scoot oh, in. Hello. What's going on, Mark? So I have a theory, man. I have a theory yeah. that says that most people want the lifestyle of an entrepreneur with the work ethic of an employee. Right. The work ethic and the mindset of an employee. An employee mindset is one that says, if I show up, I deserve a paycheck. Right. Right. And so the, the, the notion of... What would you be fired for today needs to come into play when these agents are their own boss, when these agents are there, you know, making their own hours or, or doing something like that. Right. And so I, I spent a lot of time sort of breaking down, deconstructing the employee in them mm -hmm. and, and building the leader in, in the agents that I work with. Um, and it's a struggle, man. It's a struggle. These people, most of us are indoctrinated into the, into the, the, checkbox society you know what i mean like right. as long as it it's not the checkbox society as much it's the the problem that i find when i talk to agents is they don't love themselves enough to fight for themselves right they kind it. of just go along life i'm going to do this 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 and this and i'm going to be okay but they don't they don't have that fire in them right i speak when i speak publicly i i start with we all have a spark in us who's mm -hmm. going to turn into a fire right we all have that spark and want to do something right but do you have the fire that's going to actually push you and, and build that flame so big that everyone's going to see what you're doing and have that passion for it? And right. that's the problem is that most people, whether they work for a corporation or whether they work for themselves, don't love themselves enough to fight for themselves. Mm. And as soon as you break that down to some agents and realize, get them to realize that they don't love themselves, they need to do some really, really heavy thinking oh, about yeah. who they are and what they want. 
I, the problem I, is that everyone's scared to make a change because they're so comfortable in the life that they're in and the path that they're on that they're not willing to take a step out of the box and make yeah, that change zone. in order to take them to the next level. All right, did I did I miss a memo? What's the memo? Because I've got my real estate skill builder hat on, man. I don't, I don't know, man. Well, Seiko, I, I got I got to tell you something. Right. I have the original. He has got the original. The original. The oh. original hat. They suck. They, they, they suck too. They, they really suck. Really but I got one of the original hats back in the with day. The, with, the, with the power thing. Listen, I'm going to run back out because I'm driving production. I'm making sure that I'm working with agents that love each other and love themselves. But I do have to say this. I am so, so, so glad that I get to work with guys like you. Um, the, the, the idea and the notion that business is bigger than just numbers, that it's about self-reflection, that it's about self-love and growth and, and having the desire to share your success with your friends, your family and your customers and your coworkers. I, I think that's an amazing thing. So I salute you, brother. I'm walking back out into the world of production. I don't know which direction the microphone, I mean, the, the camera is for. I'm walking out into the world of production. I don't know. I love you guys. Have a great yeah, day. And see you later. Thank you for coming on, man. Be careful. Thank you for having me. I don't know what this is. There you go. That's just a, a, a list of people, a list of people. So, you, you know, I mean, he's right. I mean, you, we talked about the, the, the independent. We talked about the employee mindset, which is what he was talking about, right? So it's just, I mean, it's odd, man, because people have to go from, if they had a job nine to five, mm -hmm. they'd have to get there. Now, I'm going to tell you, they need to get there a quarter to nine, so they start work at nine. A lot of people forgot that. You, they don't you, get you think that, but that's not true anymore. Nine what do you mean? I know tons of employees that not, work starts at nine. They show up at nine and take 15 minutes to settle in. And then at 445, they're packing up because at five o'clock, they want to be in their car ready to go. I was taught that if I start at nine, I start at nine. If I finish at five, I finish at five. Then I pack up. Right. Right. But that's that. But that's something that, you know, we've we've been as, as employers from time to time as I was at, at, at once at several times. Right. We enabled it. We enabled people to, to, to do that. And he says, well, it's only a little bit late. I had, this, I had this person that worked for me that would come in 9.15. I said, we start at 9. Oh, well, you know, he doesn't get in here until 9.20. I said, he doesn't punch a clock. You know, he's right. not an employee. He's an right. agent. You know, I mean, and that's something we have to deal with, too. But, you know, you don't start at 9.15. But it's that mindset, right? It's that mindset where you go to work, you, you do your, your eight hours or whatever it is, and then – at the end of the week, or at the beginning of the week, you get a check. But it goes back to that point is people don't love themselves what they, or love what they do, right? And I had this problem growing up, right? I didn't enjoy school as a kid, right? I was I was the misfit in school. I didn't bring a backpack to school almost my entire high school career. I do work. I barely graduated because I didn't enjoy what I was doing. Yes, I enjoyed learning. I just didn't enjoy learning the way the school wanted to teach, right? And then I took a year off and just kind of, you know, traveled and hung out because you know whatever 17 year old 18 year old wants to do so exactly. i did that so and then, and then i came back and i said all right my mom's like oh, you gotta go to college you can't just keep working on all these random things so i went to college and i started finding myself and at the end of that first semester right i, I ended up with a 3.8 gpa which everyone was like i understand like you failed out of high school right you barely graduated right you were a misfit on everything that we did but yeah, you get to college and you're on dean's list how does that work my answer was I, I took classes I enjoy taking, right? I took right. things I wanted to learn with teachers that I wanted to learn with. So it kind of went from, well, I'm in this life where I'm just going along just to get through it in high school to college where like all of a sudden I was like, holy cow, I can take and learn what I want to do, when I want to do it, work when I want to work, fit it into my life the way I want it. And that's when I realized like I, I love being an entrepreneur because I can do what I want when I want as long as I'm doing something to take the step forward. Right. And then that was my lowest semester, yet, you know, at all was was that first semester. Everything else was higher than that. And I started my first business, like first real big business in the second semester in college where, you know, we were on Wall Street. You know, we had uh, we had to get the SEC's permission to to buy stocks uh, through a credit card. We made CNBC cool side of the day like we were like building, building, building. And I kind of realized, that, like, I'm a marketer and a brander. That's what I want to do. And I focus all my classes then on that we won second place for new york state entrepreneurship competition with this with this business that's right and i realized that like as long as i continue doing what it is i love and continue working with people that actually want to work with me i can be as successful as i want 
and I became a marketer and brander. And I originally wanted to go into sports marketing and I did it for a few months and I was like, I'm not dealing with this shit for the rest of my life. Like I want to go do what I want to do. And I kind of took a step back and that's when my real estate career started taking off in college. Cause I actually refocused and said, I can do what I can do my marketing and branding and build a real estate business because I, I love what I was doing. I was working the hours I wanted to work. I was putting in the work and working, you know, on activities that got me excited every day to go to work. And that's the problem. We live in a society where a lot of people aren't excited to go to work in the morning, right? The, the Monday comes and they're like, oh, I got to go back to work on Monday. And by Wednesday, they're like, oh, week's almost over. But if that's the way you're going to look at life, you're never going to be in that successful mindset of, of getting to the next level. You're going to be just, I'm going to go along my day every day and, and hope for the best. Well, and the thing is, if you, if, if you have that mindset of, oh, shit, here comes Monday and Wednesday, the week's almost over, what are you doing? I mean, you're just going through life. I mean, that's, to me, that's not fun. I want to look forward to things for a certain reason. I try not to look forward to things too much because I don't want the time to go fast because I enjoy so much of what I do, right? But, but that's the mindset of, of a lot of our society that, that's hard for people to break. They don't understand that there's, a, there's an opportunity out there for them to be happy with what they're doing. Right. And even, even as I sell houses, I have buyers all the time and they're buying these really nice big houses. I'm like, oh, so what do you do? And they're like, oh, I'm a, I'm a, a lawyer and I'm doing this kind of law. I'm like, oh, it sounds exciting. He goes, actually, it sucks. Yeah, I'm like, right? They're like, I hate going to work every day, but I, I went to law school. I got this job. It pays really good money. So I'm going to keep doing it every day until I die. I'm like, that is the worst way to go through life. Right. But just because you have money, you know, you're keeping a job. Like, yes, I understand money is a stressful thing in households and I get all that. But he goes to work every day, not happy just to bring home a paycheck to pay for this big house he's buying for his, for his family, because that's what everyone wants. Right. Everyone wants this lifestyle of the big houses and vacations, all that other stuff. But what are you doing to yourself? How are you hurting yourself in order to do that versus what are you doing for yourself to benefit yourself and be happy when you're doing it? Um, and it just, it's amazing to see and have those conversations with people. I, exactly. I, I just want to want to shoot over to the side here. We have Jeff Quinlan saying hello and, and checking in. We have Erica and Alfie Markovic saying the beard game is strong. Today. <laughs> we had to say on as well. And uh, we love Mark Stein, she says. So thank you guys for, for making the comments. If you guys have any comments or questions, please bring them in. We do have a bunch of people on right now. Uh, tell us if you uh, if you like what we're doing or not, whatever. Right. You know, uh, we're going to keep doing it whether you like it or not anyway. So, Absolutely. So, so you mentioned a word before that I got to get into. I, I, I got to ask you this question. Yeah. You used the word misfit. <laughs> your, your, your handle on, on, on Instagram, whatever you want to call it, your name is Mark the Misfit. Yes. Talk to us about Mark the Misfit. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read you the motto of what Misfit is. Okay. Right? And so you can understand it and then we can talk about it. But here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of, fond of the rules and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify them, vilify them. And only thing that you can't do to them is ignore them because they change things. They push the human race forward and while some may see them as the crazy ones, we see them as geniuses because the people who are crazy enough to think that they can change the world are the ones that do. That's the motto of Mark the Misfit. I, I, love, can, that. I, I love that. I need to steal that. I, I, I've always said just real quickly is I've always said that I always have been different. So that's why I believe in teaching different. Go ahead. I mean, so you've used that. I've and, used that as a motto the last few years because... The, the word misfit, everyone's like, you just don't fit in. Well, look at the world of the six most successful people, right, who, who didn't fit in, right, who either didn't graduate high school or didn't go through college or were the oddballs or had crazy ideas or yelled from the Raptors some crazy idea that they want to do. But look, but look at who, who are the business leaders in this world today. They're all entrepreneurs. They all were a misfit at one point or another. Right. None of them followed the normal, let's call it path of life where they just kind of went along, you know, high school, college, graduate school, job and went all, all those things. They kind of just did their thing. They had an idea to change something in the world or to change the world. And they went out there and found a way to do it. Right. Which goes back to goes back to, you know, my my whole message now is do good for others. But it's really is whatever it takes. Right. right. I, I've been I've been interviewing and talking to people about whatever it takes, which I'm turning into a podcast soon. But 
what does it take to be successful, right? Let's understand what's in these people's heads, right? And what they go through to, to change the world and change, you know, our service industry, right? And that's really what it comes down to, whether it be real estate or whether it be anything else, right? The ones that are most successful are the ones that are going to be a little bit out there in terms of how they do things. And they're going to create the most noise, but they're also going to create the most success for the people around them. Exactly. It's it just, it's, you know, noise is one thing because there's so much of it. And if you can come out and be, you know, inspirational and motivational to people with, with being different or being that misfit personality. And, and that's, I mean, that's just really cool. I commend you for that. I, I know you work on a lot of different things. You are, uh, you're one guy that, that I admire so much simply because like you've, you, you've always got something going, you always got a new idea and stuff. And just to get back to that, to that, that focus and that heart and everything we talked about before is, you know, how many people are going to get up at five, six o'clock in the morning because they've got to get all this stuff done. They want to get all this stuff done. I'm not saying you have to do that to be successful. I'm not saying you have to do that to be considered a real business owner, but it doesn't hurt. And there's a lot of people that have to do that. I'm one of them. I've always gotten up early. I've always done it. And, and, and I know that, you know, my goal is always one way or the other to set an example, mm -hmm. right. And to do the work and everything else. Right. Um, I wanted to go into the other thing that we that, that was on our promo, uh, which is which is something that you have called Kidspiration. Yes. And I think that's really, really freaking cool because you and I have talked about it a yeah. little bit. You've explained some of it to me. Please talk about Kidspiration and Kidspiration uh, art. So about 18 months ago at this point, um, I was out there looking for some type of motivational, inspirational artwork for my kids. I have two girls, 11 and nine now, wonderful girls. And we talk all the time about mindset and about being happy and helping others. Like I want them to grow up in a world where, you know, all these things are um, part of who they are. And I went out looking for artwork for their walls and I was not able to find anything that was geared towards kids. What I found was motivational and inspirational artwork that had to do with money and the materialistic luxury products that we have in the world today. And I did not want them looking at that every day as being part of them. So we created this little project where we, you know, came up with sayings and phrases that we would talk about, about being a better person or, you know, be anything you want to be, be beautiful. You see the ones behind me and we turned it into artwork. And that artwork was a project for them, which then other people started asking about. And this past November, we turned it into a business where we, you know, took all the artwork and we expanded what we've, what we have, and we've created it into canvas art um, geared towards kids. And at the end of the day, I'm getting messages from parents and teachers and children's psychologists and life coaches who are all using this now in the back of their Zoom calls, in their classrooms, in their homes. Um, we built a, a, a Kidspiration wall behind me, as you can see, where I do all my Zoom calls from. Um, my kids do their TikToks and do all their, uh, their social media in front of this. And it's really just to remind people like, you can be anything you want to be, just remember it. And if you see it every day and it's bright and colorful and you read it, eventually it becomes part of your psyche and becomes part of who you are. And so we created Kidspiration Art now as a business with them and the girls love it. And we come up with different ideas of what to share. So we have what's called the beeline, which is what's up behind me where there's about 35 or 36 different B messages. So you see, be magical, you can be brave, be kind, be beautiful, you see, be happy, be unique, right? All these different messages that we have because something's gonna relate to you know other people. Um, we've had a request for be blessed. We created one that sells like hotcakes now. So all these things that we've created now are, are helping other kids and adults now have a positive mindset um, about being who they wanna be and being true to themselves. And it goes back to the whole point of loving yourself, right? If you love yourself and you're happy with who you are and you know who you are, you can do more and be more successful. So if I can instill this in my kids and help other parents instill it in their kids um, and in their lives, everyday lives, uh, I, I think it'd be a wonderful thing for everyone just to learn to you know, have that mindset in their everyday life. So we have the beeline, um, we have a unicorn line where it's about you know different unicorns in different industries. Uh, we have a bunch of different sayings about smiling and being positive and sharing and, you know, caring with others. And we're expanding upon it now because we got a lot of different requests on different ways to go with it. And we're happy to help wherever we can. So we've been doing it now for a few months as a business. 
and it's hugely successful and we're going to keep growing it uh, going forward. That's, that's nice. It's so cool, man. I mean, I know recently um, you were at, uh, you were at a, a, an event and you ran into uh, this guy that's called Caleb Maddox, right? Yes. Um, tell me about Caleb and, and I, I think it was a little bit of inspiration for you at all or no? Yeah, Caleb um, is a is a young kid who I met probably six years ago or five years ago. Um, his family went through a rough time. His father became his motivator. And over time, he's now become a, a motivator for a lot of youth. And uh, they have a really good positive message and they share a lot of stuff. And he was at the event and I showed him what, what we were doing with my kids. And he thought it was the greatest thing in the world. And, uh, you know, gave us a great shout out on social media and took – a lot of our uh, our stuff and you know he said look at the end of the day it's 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 about who you are right so figure out who you are and figure out the path you want to go on and so that's what we're doing we're doing that with them and their friends and my friends kids and now we've reached people all over the country i mean there's there's kids all over the place we've even gotten requests now from uh youth programs and organizations and schools we're going to set up this as a program for a fundraiser for them where they'll be able to send out a link and every sale that gets made a few dollars will go as a donation back to the school or organization for the programming for kids. So, you know, we're really making this into a community by community business where everyone can benefit from it because it's not just about us doing this as a business, but it's about us sharing this message with as many people as possible. Right. It's about thinking about doing something you don't think you can do to show yourself that you can do it and that you're more than you think. Right. right. These are all messages that like the kids need to hear because you know, kids, when they're babies, they learn to walk. They have no fear. They kind of just push, push, push. They want something. They have that primal focus on going to get it. Maybe As so. you get older, you lose your focus because, oh, you live in a world where now there's social media and there's, there's school and then there's after school activities and there's sporting games and all these different things are being pulled in and you lose your focus. But if the kids can go back to that focus of learning to love themselves of who they are and where they want to go and develop that at an earlier stage. I think we'll find that the next generation will have happier adults because they're doing what they want to do as opposed to just going along the path of life, which is mapped out for them by our society. I completely agree with you. I mean, I, I, that, that is so cool what, what you're doing with that and how you got your kids involved and how this is going to get other kids involved as well. Right. I talk about a lot of times, I call it baby focus, and, and it's it's a, a baby, an infant to three, four years old is it's just a sponge. And they just grab everything and anything. And there's always yeah. something they're going to be focused on. You can't get their attention away from. I call that baby focus. I think that's what we need to go back to. You know, and we need to understand what that focus is and, and understand it and move forward. So we've been on for a while and I, we've shared a lot of great stuff. I want to uh, uh, just uh, skip and ship, shift over to, um, you know, we talked a little bit about what's going on today and, you know, we're, you and I are going to, going to partner up on, on something starting next week. Talk a little bit about what we got going on and give us a little promo on that, Mark. So we're going to come on live every morning next week at 845 in the morning, level up to success. Um, we're going to discuss just concepts, ideas, bring people on to talk to you about what they've done in order to bring their business to the next level and discuss based on what's going on in our world today, how we can refocus ourselves and our energy and use it to our advantage to reach the next level of success. So I think that, you know, log on to Facebook um, every morning uh, next week at 845 and just hear a small clip of what can you think about today in order to change the way you think and way you do things in order to be successful. Yeah. And, and, and this, we're going to, we're going to do this. We're going to do this, not, as a promo for ourselves, but as something that would help, that will help people in our changing world. I mean, there's so many different things going on and it's time for us to level up. I mean, to, to, to pick it up and, right. and to pick up the pace and, and to, you know, to, uh, to, to, to uh, adapt to change and, 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 and um, embrace it. That was the word I was looking for. Embrace the change and actually be a change. Look, one of the things about this business, you can agree with me or not, is, is, is I don't think our business has changed at all. How we do our business with technology and everything else has changed. But in, as we get further into the 21st century, mm -hmm. you know, there's a little, little nuances in conversations, little nuances in dialogue. That's a little bit of a change. But there's also things you can do. And our, what we're going to do, I think, Mark, if you'll agree with this, is that we're going to help people 
make those changes. We're going to help people advance uh, into the world. And you know what? We're here to help. We're not here and, and do good for others, as you said. We're here to help people. And that's all we want to do. So we're going to bring on experts. Um, and we're just talking about 15, 20 minutes, right? We're not talking about yeah, 15, 20 minutes every morning. But yeah. again, it, it, it's we have all the tools in, at our fingertips these days, right? We have all the technology. We have social media. We have we have ways to do business, right? These are all tools in our tool belt, right? But at the end of the day, it's about building the relationship with our customers, building right. a relationship with our communities, building a relationship with the people we want to do business with right. in order to do that, right? And so while, yes, we can talk about all the different tools that are available out there, right? That that changes every day. You know, all of a sudden, there's new technology is going to help us sell more houses. But at the end of the day, if we don't have a relationship with the people that you want to do business with, a relationship with your customers that's ongoing, right? It's not just about the relationship this moment to get this deal done. It's about building a relationship forever and, and getting customers from them as referral source. And that, that hasn't changed and it never will, right? So our tools will change over time and they have over the last 20 years I've been in this business. Right. Um, but the, the core of this business is building those relationships with not just other people, but other agents. Like I have agents I can call now anywhere in New Jersey and, and parts of the country. Hey, I got a listing coming up in this area. Can you help me with it? They're not going to make a penny on it, but because they know that I call them up to help them when I can, they're going right. to help me when I call them up. So, right. you know, it's about building those relationships throughout your business and throughout everything you do in order to level up to the next level of business and life and success. It's 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 like, OK, so the technology and everything will get you the contacts and it'll help you with the contracts. Right. But in between is our, our, our new friend Michael Lawrence said the other day is what's in between contacts and contracts is the relationship. Right. Right. And, and yeah, it's, it's the glue. It's the, it's like, it's 80% right. in my opinion of any, any uh, transaction you're going to do or right. any relationship of relationship you're going to do. Right. So that's great. I, I, I'm looking forward to doing that with you starting on Monday. Um, uh, we'll both be in different states at that time. We don't know what, we know what state of mind we'll be in, but we don't know what state we'll be in. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, Mark, how, how do people get in contact with you? How do they, how do they come, come, come talk to you to see what you're doing and, and, and maybe, you know, learn from you more? How do they do that? So the best way is through either Facebook or Instagram, Facebook, it's Mark Stein. It's with a C M A R C. People always question me on that one, but it is with a C, so um, that's that. And then on uh, Instagram is the best way to reach me. Message me through Instagram, Mark the Misfit. Easy to find. Communicate with me. Share with me your thoughts. Share with me memes. I love that stuff. You know, whatever it is that you have, you're going through, like, let me know. I'm happy to help. Um, my the name of my company is Links Residential, Links NJ. Uh, you can re feel free to email me. Um, we're doing some great stuff here in Bergen County. We got some awesome new ideas that we're going to bring to the table next week in this crazy world we live in. But, you know, we got to keep changing how we do business in order to, to do business. So exactly. I know my team and I have sent out emails, we're having calls, you know, discussing ideas of what we can be doing for our customers, buyers and sellers in order to ease this time for them. And, and we're going to continue doing that. Well, that, that's, that's absolutely amazing. I want, I want to thank you so much for sharing everything today. And usually it's this time of the broadcast where I say, you know, I know you came on just for the hat, and I think you came on just for a new hat. I did come um, for you. Actually, I got this hat before you started your your uh, you, conversations. You did. You did. You got it before the broadcast, and and, and you have been privy, I must say, yes. to get the new one. Yes. You do have one of these, and uh, but you're going to get the solid black with my <laughs> autograph on it, which awesome. is what you send out now with episode 90 written on it. Excellent. So you're going to get that one. I want to thank everybody for taking the time. To, to watch this, whether you watched it live or whether you watched it um, uh, recorded or whatever, I, I, I thank you so much. Hey, everybody, God bless everybody, and just do unto others what you do for yourself. And that's and as Mark would say, say it, Mark. Just do good for others. Simple that's as that. It. That's it. Thank you so, Mark, so much, Mark. Stay on for a second. And uh, everybody, uh, take care. We'll see you next week. And um, we got great people coming up. We've got Ten more episodes to reach. We get episode one hundred. That is going to be a special show. We already we're going to have several people on that show, and we've already got them coming in wanting to be on it. So we'll see you next week for episode ninety one. Thanks. Have a great weekend, everyone.